So what we're going to do is rasterize a triangle, but this time we're just going to look at following the left edge. So let's pretend we have a triangle in a simple 2D coordinate system. So we'll need a Y axis and we'll need an X axis. Now note that I've drawn my Y axis with the positive direction going up. In some graphics packages, positive Y actually points down. So if your image appears to be flipped upside down, Y probably went the other way. So our triangle needs to have three points. So I'll just draw three points here real quick connect them to form a triangle. So this vertex right here is the bottom edge and it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over in X and then up to in Y. So that point is at 7 comma 2. And remember that we were just going to focus on the left edge. So I'll just keep track of this midpoint which is at 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So to keep track of the left edge, what we want to do is know the value of x on the left edge as we move up each scan line. And just a quick note about treating my little graph paper here as a pixel display device. You might think because I have these squares here that the center of each square is the center of each pixel. However, conceptually what I'm doing is I'm treating the intersection of each grid line as the center of the pixel. So really my pixels are right here with their centers at the intersections between the grid lines. So for example in my triangle here, 7 comma 2 refers to the center of the pixel located seven rows, seven columns over and two rows up. So what I need to do is compute the slope of this edge right here. Slope is equal to, it's often called M, but it's equal to rise over run. And in this case, the rise is 7 minus 2, so that would be 5. And the run is 4 minus 7, so that would be negative 3. Now, alternatively, I could have figured out the slope as rise over run with the rise being 2 minus 7, which is negative 5, and the run being 7 minus 4, which is 3. And you'll notice in both cases I get negative 5 thirds. So it doesn't really matter which order you subtract the x components and the y components as long as you're consistent about that order. So the slope, or m, is equal to negative 5 thirds. When we do triangle rasterization, we're going up one scan line at a time. So what I would like to know is what the x value is along the left edge of the triangle. And I'm going to abbreviate that as x left. And then I'm going to make a table where I keep track of which scan line I'm on as I go across the columns. And I'm going to keep track of x left as I go. So x left in scan line 2 is equal to 7. So I'm just going to write down a 7 right there. The next scan line is scan line number 3, so that means that I go up 1, and that takes me to scan line number 3, and I want to figure out what left is. So the whole trick to this is keeping in mind that slope is equal to rise over run, and slope is equal to negative 5 thirds. So slope is equal to rise over run, and in this case, since I went up one scan line, the rise was equal to 1, and the run was equal to something that I'll call delta x. And now I want to solve for delta x. And what I end up with is delta x is equal to um, 1 over rise over run. So I just flipped these two across the equal sign. And that's really equal to the run over the rise. And that's really equal to 1 over the slope. So as I move up one scan line, 
then I change the value of x on the left by 1 over the slope on the left, which is 1 over negative 5 thirds, which is delta x on the left is equal to negative 3 over 5. So 7 plus negative 3 over 5 is equal to 35 over 5 plus negative 3 over 5, which is negative 32 over 5, which is equal to 6 and 2 fifths. So I get 6 and 2 fifths right here. And then when I go up to scan line number 4, I apply another delta x to 6 and 2 fifths. So I take 6 and 2 fifths and then add negative 3 fifths. And so that's really 32 fifths minus 3 fifths, which is equal to 29 fifths, which is equal to 5 and 4 fifths. So I get 5 and 4 fifths here. And so that gives me scan line 4. Then I go up another scan line to scan line number 5. And that gives me, and I apply a negative 3 fifths to get from scan line 4 to scan line 5. And that tells me that in scan line 5, I'm at 29 fifths minus 3 fifths, which is equal to 26 fifths which is equal to 5 and 1 fifth. So I get 5 and 1 fifth here. Moving up to scan line number 6, I simply subtract 3 fifths again, and in that case I get 4 and 2 fifths. Now I get 4 and 3 fifths. And then when I move up to scan line number 7, I subtract 3 fifths again and I end up with 4. And you'll notice that at that point the x value on the left side is equal to the next vertex. So I've interpolated the x value from the bottom vertex to the top vertex going from scan line 2 to scan line 7 and smoothly varying from 7 to 4. So I smoothly vary from 7 to 4 by simply adding negative 3 fifths as I moved up each scan line. And I use negative 3 fifths because that's 1 over the slope, which is the run over the rise. And I know the rise, and so that gave me the run in each case. All right, good luck.